Ho, ho, ho. Good morning, South Island. Good morning, SPS. It's Elvis here. Elvis in the later phase of his career, having had too many burgers. Uh, I hope you're all dressed up. I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do a church service dressed as Elvis. It's the closest I'll get to a Las Vegas wedding chapel. That's where the only other Elvises are who take services. So welcome to you all, and I hope you get into the spirit of things today. This is, I'm gonna to have to take these off because they're too dark. <laughs> this is the last chapel service of the term. I hope as many of you as possible have dressed up. I want you to have a really good laugh in this last week of online learning. It's going to be strange to go back next term. Many of you I know are missing each other. Perhaps even some of you are missing your teachers. Some of you may have got into a nice wee routine. Some of you maybe are dreading coming back, but I think most of you are quite looking forward to it. I'm missing the banter, definitely. I promise that when we come back in April, we're going to take it nice and slow as a school. We're not just going to be back with a bang, straight to class, straight back to normal. I think there's an opportunity for us all, and I think we need to take an opportunity to, to take time and think about the roller coaster of the last year. This period when you haven't been at school is it's really unique in modern history. And with thinking about it all, the, all the good bits, all the bad bits, I think it's important that we just take that time to see how much it has changed all of us. It's even changed me into Elvis. So a joke this week to uh, outline our theme. A Labrador dog sees a poster outside a computer store and the poster says, we're now hiring. The poster then reads, applicant must be able to type, must be able to program and must be bilingual. We are an equal opportunities employer. The wee doggy takes the poster in his mouth and walks in. The manager spots the dog and decides to humor it, pulling up a chair and a computer with a word processor. All right, if, if you want to work here, you need to first write a letter for me. And then he leaves the room. 30 minutes later, he comes back in and the dog has typed out a completely error-free letter. Well, my goodness, this is a smart dog, said the man, but can he program? 20 minutes go past and the dog has made a perfectly running website for the store. The owner's shocked and he looks at the dog and finally says, look, I know you have the qualifications, but, but you're a dog. The dog nudges the words on the poster. We are an equal opportunities employer, it says. The manager sighs and thinks, yeah, he's right. But there's no way you're bilingual. The dog looks him in the eyes and just says, meow. I think that's a great one. And this week, I, I think it hits the mark as a joke which goes to the heart in many ways. It's quite a profound act joke actually when you think about it, goes to the, the heart of equality. What is equality? This week began with International Women's Day. We have the trial of George Floyd getting underway as well. And allegations of racism have been mentioned this very week at the heart of the royal family. The world is more attuned than ever to issues of discrimination happening all around us, whether intentional or even subliminal, this unconscious bias that maybe all of us have. Many issues that our parents or grandparents just accepted as the norm, that's the way the world is. Many of those issues are now being challenged. And that's at the heart of the Me Too movement, or indeed Black Lives Matter, challenging stereotypes or assumptions about the way the world works challenging perhaps a white male worldview. International Women's Day highlighted a theme which was choose to challenge, whether those challenges be challenging inequality, challenging bias, questioning stereotypes, creating a more inclusive world. It's amazing for me to think that the average woman still receives 23% less pay 
than a man. It's amazing for me to think that in the UK Parliament, there's only 24% of the seats that are filled by women. Last time I looked, women made up 50% of the population. There is still a long way to go. So why not strike the pose in support and solidarity of a more inclusive world? It's something like this is the, the theme for International Women's Day. You put your hand up as if in a, a form of challenge. I'm not sure how many girls at school feel that there is a gender imbalance. Perhaps some of you do. Perhaps some of you don't feel equal to the boys or get treated equally. I'd be interested too to know how the boys feel. I'm sure it's a debate that has happened a hundred times at Strathallan, and it will probably happen another hundred times. To me, that is a good thing. As long as we're talking, as long as we're working towards a world of equality with no bias and no discrimination, surely that should be the goal at the heart of our Strathallan values. Think about the values, respect, humility, kindness, honesty, excellence. Those values are underpinned by not discriminating, by having diversity and celebrating it, by celebrating what is good, not what is bad. To be a truly loving community, we must continually challenge ourselves. We must continually be working towards a more equal school and then a more equal world around. So why on earth am I, the chaplain, dressed up as Elvis? Why am I so passionate about these issues? Well, listen to this reading now from one of Paul's letters 2,000 years ago, which goes to the heart of this. Robin. For you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. And now you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Thank you, Robin. Equality then was an issue at the beginning of Christianity. And I know a lot of people don't think that. A lot of people think Christianity has made equality uh, issues harder. But that was written by Paul 2,000 years ago. Neither slave nor free, neither male nor female. Part of the vision for the world from a Christian viewpoint is that no one is better than anyone else. No one is better than anyone else. Before God, we all matter equally. We are equally loved, equally valued, equally important. All difference melts away, and Christ looks at our hearts. Surely that's the most important thing we should be worried about. What's going on in here? What is in our hearts? Let's pray. This is a special prayer for International Women's Day. On this International Women's Day, as we celebrate and give thanks for the achievements of women, we remember the women who've played a part in our lives, those who have nurtured us, taught us, inspired us, loved us. Forgive us when we have limited women through inequality, by stereotype, by exclusion, through lack of opportunity. Today, as we acknowledge the challenges women still face, we pray that all women may know equality, equality of health care, of education, of wealth, of prospects. We pray that all women may know themselves to be respected, safe, included, and empowered. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus, in whom there is neither male nor female. Amen. And now we have our chorus for this week, a new commandment I give unto you. And I would just take this opportunity to thank Mrs. Simsis for this term's music, and particularly Madeline and all of those who have joined in. Thank you. <laughs>